Housing First has five key principles. Principle number four, individualized and person-driven supports. Now, support is meant to fit the participant, not the other way around. People are at the center of Housing First. Therefore, the support team provides appropriate team members, approach and tools that help each individual with their goals. Whether that's grocery shopping, working, adopting a pet, finances, therapy, or engaging with new communities. By replacing complicated policies with flexible models and a can-do philosophy, the team helps participants reduce long-standing systemic barriers, thereby improving self-determination, choice, and quality of life. The challenge in doing sort of a modified Housing First program is if you put people in housing without supports, you're likely not going to have a very high chance of success. It's sort of like warehousing people. You're just taking them and then placing them here and expecting everything to turn around. I think it's not a housing only program, it's a housing first program. So first you give them housing and then you wrap the supports around them. If you stick with the principles, the way that the program translates specifically is different for every person. You know, but, but I think when, when you get lost in the weeds of like, what do we do about this person or is this uh, the right thing to do or not the right thing to do, I think the principles guide the decision-making process, but they don't prescribe it. The best thing to do is just kind of deal with people one-on-one -on -one and ask them what they want and what they're, you know, what they're looking towards. And then hopefully there's somebody or something out there that can put them into the right track and make you successful. So we have psychiatry, counseling, peer workers, Aboriginal specialists, kind of the whole gamut of different folks. And then our job is just to build relationships with people and when they want something or when they're ready for a service, we're there to provide it should they want it. So there's no requirement that they see a doctor, there's no requirement that they see a counsellor. They just get housing and we help them make sure that they keep that housing. The uniqueness of ACT is that, and Housing First, is it's really based on what the person wants to do and their goals. And it could be, I want to go visit my family in Ontario. So it might be getting ID, it might be filling out paperwork. And we try to be purposeful and meaningful in those visits, but sometimes it also might be relationship-based, like engagement of going out together and getting to know each other before you can start talking about what's meaningful to them. So a visit, you know, could be anything from helping the person grocery shop, helping them with home care, taking care of their apartment, um, working on any of their goals, obviously, is what we're doing. We kind of do everything. We drink coffee with folks, we go to the library with them, grocery shopping. This morning I went grocery shopping in the West End. If somebody was taken out of their home and put into a shelter, how would they feel their first week? You know, it's a... Uh... Even though moving from the shelter to the home is a more positive change, it's still a massive change and it takes time to adapt. And if you, someone's pushing in your face to trust me, I'm your best friend now and you've never met them, you don't know them, trust me, trust me, trust me. Like, the more you get in my face, the more I back off and I've probably a lot of people with trust issues. I think a lot of people do tend to push a little hard sometimes. So a bit of patience in dealing with clients, especially at the beginning, allowing somebody to become comfortable. We're dealing with people who have survived uh, incredible hardship and people have done it by being completely uh, focused on their survival in very specific ways. The only way someone like that is going to work with you is if you follow them and that's why it has to be individualized because they cannot let that go. That's kept them alive and so they're not going to suddenly stop and comply with what it is you wish. So the program has to be client driven. It's clinically correct, it's, it's, it's effective, it's, it's also you know, the only way that the person's going to succeed. When I entered the field we weren't harm reduction, we weren't recovery oriented. So there was lots of times when we subtly used coercion and took choice away. And for me, thinking of that way and then thinking of the way in which the ACT team gets to work is, is way more meaningful and satisfying than working in old ways that, you know, didn't get behind people in the same way. Anything is possible when you give people nice housing and you give them the support that they need so that housing can 
can go well, anything is possible then. So people come with all of these like great kind of outside, out of the box kind of ideas and they're willing to go to the extra mile, you know, like and drive to Burnaby to pick up a free microwave because so-and-so needs a microwave or to stay late and, or to start early to bring, bring people to a, an appointment or whatever needs to happen. And also involves a program that's flexible and nimble so that you don't have a lot of policies that prevent you from doing things and you have a lack of policies that allow you to do what it takes for people to make change. I do think that we're, you know, sometimes we're pushing the boundaries, but let's remind ourselves the people who are really pushing the boundaries are the people we're trying to serve. But boundaries are kind of a continuum and, and we're all, you know, crossing them and pulling back and crossing them. And, and so I think what has to kind of guide us is, are we causing harm to anybody? And also understanding that so many of the things that are asked of us don't cause any harm to us. Because sometimes as workers we feel like actually what we're doing is risky, when actually all that's happening is we're being discomforted and we're being asked to stretch our codes of ethics. And codes of ethics are not um, written in stone. We created these and we can change these. I have a framework of harm reduction and I translate that into so many other things. It's not just offering somebody a needle or offering somebody a sleeve to their coffee. It's I'm meeting somebody where they're at and saying, what do you need right now? Let's be in relationship and let's transform this. The world is not black and white. Um, the world is very gray. And, we, and that's our greatest strength as workers, is being able to navigate those areas that aren't very clear to us. Um, and being able to navigate them in a way that, um, again, causes no harm to the folks we're working with. I think what working in a creative community housing first environment has done for me over the years is really deprofessionalized me and deprofessionalized my knowledge base and made me really do away with any notion of uh, epistemological authority that I thought maybe I had prior prior to starting this kind of work in terms of knowing you know what was best for people and being able to diagnose people's problems and to understand a linear way of treating them. Um, those notions have been totally dispelled and I think that for me it's about really learning how to work in areas of uncertainty and learning how to confront complexity. When you have the privilege of working with folks and you can create relationships of respect and dignity across the huge differences of how much privilege I have and how much oppression other people have experienced, you know, that relationship will transform me. It, it doesn't just it's not just something we do, quote, for the clients. That changes who I am as a person. If we can unravel our own power, you know, and dismantle some of that and question some of that, then we can truly be open to the other. We're gonna be transformed as workers. That's the stuff that keeps us in the work a long time. I think also underpinning that is like having a radical respect for the strength of the people we're working with, that our privileged lives can't, we can't know about it. We, we only learn that when people let us into those lives of struggle and resistance, and that is, um, that's massively an honor for me.